Three shots, four part, I just do two. One pup, pop four, birdie, woo -hoo. New driver, info, replace, into pop five, fairway, what you fin do? Think I'll try to get on into start right, good line, good view, it drew, shoot him, make Gavin. All right, welcome to another episode of On the Screws podcast. Two weeks in a row. Yeah, two weeks in a row, Bryce, that we've had uh, recent winners on. So uh, this is Ziggy Nathu. Did I pronounce that right, Ziggy? Yeah, you got that perfect. Okay, great. Nice. Um, so Ziggy's just fresh off a uh, win on the Vancouver Golf Tour. Is that correct? Yeah, Vancouver Golf Tour. Quick little interruption from the pod. We just found out our guest this week, Ziggy Nathu, has just won another event on the Vancouver Golf Tour Winter Tour event number three at Meadow Gardens one day event November 3rd, 2021, firing a seven under 65, absolutely dominating the field. If you haven't already, head over to On the Screws podcast over on our YouTube channel. We have exclusive video of Ziggy walking off the 18th green. You do not want to miss it, but let's get it back into it. Let's go. Little story Ziggy and I met back when I was. Uh caddying for a friend jake on the canadian tour at the osprey valley event tpc toronto uh ziggy was a great player we were just kind of chatting um all day it was it was good so we just kept in contact through social media which is great and i said let's uh let's get you on the podcast so maybe just give us an introduction about yourself ziggy i know you've been in the game a long time a lot of uh, a lot of wins a lot of accolades but if you can just tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself and then uh yeah we can jump into a conversation yeah for sure um yeah, my name's Ziggy. I'm from Richmond, BC, uh, just outside Vancouver. Uh, played the Mac Tour this year. I turned pro back in September of 2019. Um, so I guess this was my second full year as a pro. Um, yeah, it's been it's been good so far. Um, it's kind of kind of tough with COVID, but uh, yeah, it, it is yeah, what that's, it is. that's what I was gonna say. Like, how's the uh... Like, how is that traveling across the country, like, currently? Like, what like what was the season like? You know, we can – we want to get into some college golf, but, like, maybe just yeah. start off telling us a little bit about how your season was because it, it must have been a difficult one. Yeah, it was uh, It was interesting. Like, we were – like, last season we got shut down, so I kind of just stayed local in Vancouver, um, which kind of sucked for my – oh, I guess my first full year. Um, didn't really get to experience it to its fullest. Um, but Mac Tour was good last year. Like they put on four smaller events, um, got to play some competitive events, which was nice. Um, and then I stayed home for the winter. Uh, and then they announced form to Q school. Uh, so I went down to play that, uh, missed by a few, um, headed over to South Dakota for a while, uh, played the Dakota's tour. Um, and then, the Mac Tour announced that they're going to run stuff in Canada, which was nice. So we had almost a full season, eight events, um, lots of travel. Um, I found like the, we played one week on and then three weeks off and then seven in a row, which was a lot. It are was, you uh, driving to any of your tournaments or are you flying to mostly everyone? Uh, we did a lot of driving. We drove down to Seattle for Q School, then ripped over to South Dakota. Um, then we drove up to Winnipeg. Um, and then we flew to the East Coast stuff. So we flew Montreal, Toronto, Prince Edward Island. Then we flew back to Manitoba and drove the last four on the uh, West Coast. Are you That's are great. you traveling with any guys? So in in the past, uh, I think right after uh, the Dunderave stop. I think that's where Michael Blair won. So he hopped on with mm -hmm. us. He just had a, a couple of minutes, just kind of gave us an idea of how the uh, the event won or went. And um, like he said, it was great. Like got to travel with quite a few yeah. guys. So are, are you traveling yeah. with the group right now? You got a, a couple of guys you go with? Yeah, we had a pretty good group this summer. Uh, me and Trevor Yu, another buddy from Vancouver, like we did, we traveled pretty much every week together. Um, and then we had a couple more BC boys, um, Tandra Cologne, Tony Gill, Will Barnett, uh, and then one uh, one guy from Manitoba, Travis Fredberg. Like we, that was kind of our little group. I think we could six of us that we kind of traveled everywhere together, got dinner, like hung out. So like, it was nice to have that because if you're doing that solo, that's a lot. Yeah, for oh. sure. Hopefully not in like a little Honda Accord or something. Hopefully you guys uh, got like a sprinter uh, a sprinter van or something to take you around. We we had a few cars. Uh, nice. Me and Trevor in a car, and then uh, the other boys had their cars, so it wasn't too too bad. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, let's just get into some college golf. Uh, you went to UBC, um, won a national title there, which I mean probably was amazing to be a part of. 
Um, yeah. Maybe just go through uh, your years there and kind of touch on some some key moments and some key points. And yeah, uh, yeah UBC was uh, it was interesting because I uh, I didn't really know if I was going to play college golf kind of before. Um, I wasn't really that good as a junior. Um, and then I had a really good summer right before I went to UBC. I finished second at BC Junior. And I was just planning to go to UBC for school and study. I wasn't really planning to play. Uh, the coach, Chris McDonald, watched me play at a Soyuz golf club. And he pretty much offered me a spot right there. Um, so it was kind of like, oh, like I guess this is going to happen. I'm already in school. Like, I'm going to play. Like, this is sweet. Um I was kind of six, five, six guy my first couple of years. Um, and then uh, kind of worked my way up. But I was captain the last year and a half or so. Um, we had a, like, our team was solid. Our first, uh, our first three, actually, I guess all four years, like we were pretty good. We were always ranked top 10 in the NAIA. Um, so we had a good group of guys. And then uh, that last year was pretty solid. I won twice individually, and then we won the Canadian Championship in London, Ontario. And that that was really cool because we were in a team playoff that year, which was the first time I've ever experienced that. So how did the uh, – I don't mean to cut you off there, Ziggy, but like – Yeah, no worries. Golf's an individual sport, so anybody listening right now might say, you know, like – what does he mean about the team, right? Is it all just you go out, you do your own thing? Like, how do the team events work at a college level? Yeah, so all the ones we played were you travel with five guys. Uh, five guys play the top four scores count each round. Okay. Um, so, yeah, top four, five. Um, once I, one score gets dropped from the five guys. Uh, but then do you, like, add them together, or is it kind of, yeah? Yeah, yeah, you add them together. Uh, so they got like the team portion and the individual portion. Um, so it, it's always nice to get the team win. Like then everyone, then you know everyone's kind of playing good. Yeah, totally. Right. So, yeah. you know, shortly after that, you did decide to turn pro, right? You said uh, 2019? Uh, yeah, 19. So I graduated in 19, uh, spent the summer as an M, and turned pro in September. Okay. So you got 16 total wins right now, six as a pro golfer. So, um, Am I correct in saying 10 of them were amateur or collegiate level? Yeah, so I had two collegiate ones, and I think I some of those were probably junior wins in there somewhere, but okay. a lot of command ones too, yeah. So is that national title? Like, is that the, uh, as far as the amateur status, like, is that the, the best one for you? Is that is that what sticks out to you? Uh, yeah, so there was, yeah, that, there was a month stretch in there, which is really cool. I, I won the PGA Works Championship two weeks before we won the team championship um but both of them were won in playoffs so that like little month stretch was really cool yeah that would be that'd be an intense month having all that uh back yeah, to back, right? like playoff Stress. after playoff um i i played really good in those playoffs too so those are probably some of the highlights of my college career i'd say yeah so is that where you're like okay like i'm gonna go pro now is that kind of the idea yeah, I I didn't really give it a thought till probably my third year. Like I was okay in my first two years. Uh, my third year I started playing better, and then I got my first college win in the fall uh, of my last year, and then I won the PGA Works one, and then we won the national title. I'm like, man, like I I could probably give this a run. Like I I haven't really maxed out where my golf game could be. Um, so like I just felt like if I could keep getting better every year, like why not just see how far it takes me? Yeah, you just kind of felt like it was the right time to make that jump, right? I mean, yeah, you know you're getting better, but you felt like you were there, so you just was that kind exactly. of where was that? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know we're kind of fast forward a couple of years. You get six pro wins now, right? So um, recently we mentioned just kind of in the intro there the Vancouver Golf Tour. Um, you just mm -hmm. won at Chilliwack, so seven under. You shot seven under, won by a couple strokes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, seven under. Yeah. And I, I looked at it too, and I think I saw Will Barnett and uh, her, um, yeah. and uh, Caleb as well, who we were talking about uh, just before yeah. we hopped on. A couple McKenzie Tour players too, so it looked like a pretty good field. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have a highlight in your pro career so far? Yeah, Ziggy, or or anything that um, you know. I probably. I mean, you could throw my a couple first, 
you want. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to think. Because uh, to me, like, it would be my, a lot of like the, the travel and like the experience and whatnot, right? But obviously, yeah. like, you're a professional, like, so yeah. ultimately, like, you're there to win. And it's, yeah. you know, how you create a living. So I su- I don't want to make assumptions, but I assume that that's how yeah. you, you know, kind of evaluate yourself internally, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe like one of the wins that, that sticks out I, to you. And I, then... think, I think it would have to be my first pro win, um, right. which funny enough, I just wanted to look. My first pro win was at Chilliwack. Nice. Okay. Um, uh, it would, I think it was my third pro start. Um, and I like, I was nine low. Like I had a putt for 10 deep on 18 from like 12 feet and just missed it. And I was like, holy, like that, like I can probably do this for a while. Yeah. Like it was my third pro start. Like it felt good. I was pretty hyped up at that one. Was that that's the, you, uh, that's you for confidence and stuff like going yeah. in like your first couple of years and playing well. And yeah, that's just, I mean, you're just on a, such a high and you just got to so keep it. True. I'm just uh I'm just trying to grab it right now, but I was looking at um I was looking at your site earlier, so it looked like uh so if anybody's listening, well, somebody's listening right now. So Z- <laughs> Ziggy Nathu, so it's Z I G G Y or Z I G G Y, N A T A G U dot com, correct? Yeah. So anybody who wants yeah. to check it out, I'm also gonna link link it in the description below. But uh, little plug for the website. Said that your lowest Sweet. round was a a 62, right? 62, yeah. Actually, that's a good one too. I forgot about that one. Okay um that was on the outlaw tour uh down in arizona um also my first year as a pro uh i was that's career low that was eight under um so to par not my lowest but uh overall score my lowest to par i've been nine deep okay in tournament okay. yeah nice that's a that's a pretty nice round and i was just kind of looking at a couple of the ones this year can we talk a little bit about the uh the mckenzie tour this year for sure yeah so yeah. you i think you had made or it was three out of four cuts last year right yeah yeah okay and then this year six or seven out of the eight i was six for eight yeah. okay okay so yeah. do you have any highlights of this year like any of the events that you played this year like i know you played great um like i think i saw you on the saturday at uh at the Heathlands course, TPC Toronto, mm-hmm. um, you played lights out that day. I think you shot 68 or 69 or something. I thought you got, I thought you and Jake both played really well. Um, mm-hmm. but any events that kind of stick out to you? I know you had a T13 at Elkridge. Uh, you had a yeah. T10 out in, uh, out in PI on one of the events. Yeah. I was trying to grab the other ones. Um, oh, I guess the other one was, uh, as well, the investment open. So yeah, any, any of those sure. ones stick yeah. out that you, that you felt like you kind of found your game in those ones? Uh, I think Montreal, um, okay. from this year, like I kind of, the first two days there, like I didn't really play good. I was 75, 73, kind of scraping it around. Um, I think I made the cup by one or two. Um, and then, uh, Trevor, um, he caddied for me the last two days. Nice. He was, we were kind of on the range and like, I was hitting it good on the range. I just wasn't really hitting it good on the course. And he like, he looked me, he looked at me like, pretty much before the round is like sig man just like i think it's the driving range out there like you're striping the ball here like just go out there and feel like it's the driving range so i went out there on round three and i it played tough that day and i shot 71 and i looked at him like man like i could have been so low and he was like dude like that's gonna be one of the lower scores of the day and it was it moved me up to like 25th or something like that and then the same thing the next day i just struck the ball so good and i was 67 on the final day um i think only one or two guys were lower than that uh, back to the top 10 for the first minute of the season that kind of like set the tone for me i was like okay like i i know i can play out here like it's just that was a good one for me nice nice is that where it started yeah. that was the first event right yeah that was the first event nice okay yeah. good way to good way to start out the season right yeah exactly yeah nice yeah, well, I've been uh, past couple guys. I've been asking this question too because I just find it so interesting and in how people go about their business. But just like a week to week or a day to day life of a pro golfer. I mean, maybe just go a week of what you do in a day, and maybe mm-hmm. go do a week of when you're leading up to a tournament. Just kind of how you prepare. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess like for me, like the off weeks versus the on weeks are a little bit different. Yeah. Um, on an off week. 
um, like kind of what I'm doing right now. Like I'm a, I love working out in the mornings. Um, so I'm like, I'm a morning workout guy, um, have a coffee and breakfast after that. Um, and then depending when I get a tea time, um, I'm either practice before or practice after. Um, and uh, a lot of that practice isn't really on the range. Like I'm mostly doing probably putting work or short game work. I don't really hit that many balls. Uh, I'm maybe 45 minutes to an hour 15 on hitting balls, but it's like a good two or three hours putting, chipping, all that. And then, so are you playing uh, 18 every day or are you? Um, I'd, I'd probably say if right now the weather's not great, but like earlier, probably like five to six times a week uh, I'm playing, nice. um, which is nice. So does, does that, does that change? Like if you're, you know, like you said, you're kind of playing well going into a weekend or something, do you adjust your training at all? Or do you try to keep the same for no matter what, uh, um, no matter what you're doing? Yeah. So that's an off week, uh, on week. I'm kind of, I, I don't really like working out too much in a, in a tournament week. If it's a four day event, uh, yeah. maybe one or two workouts Monday or Tuesday. Um, other than that, like, I especially with the like the travel this summer it was so much based on rest like mm -hmm. you didn't want to tire yourself out early with seven events in seven weeks so it was kind of we would try and get our practice rounds out of the way early um, and then kind of base our practice off that um, whether it was uh, like I'm like I'm rolling it pretty good like I kind of got to work on the swing a little bit or vice versa, I'm um, hitting the good, like, let me roll a few putts. So I'd say the volume of practice is definitely less in a tournament week. Yeah. Um, would you would you get you there just... early to some of the events? Like, I know the travel stuff, like, especially if you're, like you said, you were flying a few of them, but if you're driving a lot, yeah. like us following a lot of the guys, and they're, you know, like Michael Cans posting every day, he's, he's yeah. 50 something days across the country. Or not, <laughs> so, yeah. however many thousands of kilometers, but you said it was seven weeks in a row. So, if you're traveling kind of week to week and, you know, you're finishing up on a Sunday, you're, you, you know, like you mentioned, you're making a lot of the cuts, or you're kind of hanging around the events to support some friends, some buddies, and whatnot. Are, are you playing a lot of the practice rounds or are you kind of just taking advantage of the, the downtime in between? Uh, yeah. So if we ended on a Sunday and the event started on Thursday, um, we'd usually make that Monday pretty light. Okay. Um, if we we're flying out or driving on the Sunday, like Monday was usually kind of a little sleep in day, um, kind of get sorted for the week and then either nine or 18 on Tuesday and then 9 or 18 on uh, the Wednesday. It also depended on the pro am schedules. Like they scheduled us into a lot of pro ams. Um, so it's kind of like if you're playing the pro am, like I, those rounds are really long. So like I yeah. usually play nine one day and then do the 18 whole pro am. And they um, don't, they schedule practice rounds, right? You don't get any say for time or do you? Uh, they'll, they, the course is booked off so like we can kind of just roll up whenever we want to the tee um, which is nice and we we usually try to go early so then we could play it quick um, yeah. there's nothing worse than a slow practice round yeah and they they're still doing 18 hole pro ams yeah. yeah that was one of the things that like uh, last week billy mentioned that uh, on the pga tour they cut it down to nine holes so they really, I would they really like those that. nine yeah. holes yeah. yeah it'd be so much better. i think it's just everyone's more engaged in this nine holes like by yeah. the whole 13 or 14 everyone's just so tired yeah and you're just like nothing's going on in the round so i know like... um that's one of the things that michael uh blair mentioned so um right after i mentioned that he had one down in pi and he kind of hopped on with us and he said you know the the big difference between playing college golf and then as soon as you make that leap going pro is like you're also your own travel you know yeah. organizer and scheduler or agent or whatever you want to call it but he said that that was one of the hardest things to adjust to is, is kind of planning all of that as well as being able to concentrate on your play. Right. And like you say, you're trying to make as much money as possible in the tours. And then you're, you know, thinking about how you're kind of getting to the next place. So do you typically plan that all out in advance or did you kind of just go with it with some of the guys? What was, uh, how did, how did you kind of prep for that? Like seven week grind in a row? Yeah. Um, most of it was done in season actually it okay. wasn't really too far in advance um and that's just because 
they kind of announced the eight events uh kind of late so like we booked flights a little later than we usually would um but we would for if we had stuff like three weeks out like we we were booking kind of three weeks at a time um, yeah this was like a very fluid season too with things like constantly yeah. changing so you don't want to be booking yeah. too much and then having a bunch of cancellations and yeah having to deal with the extra stress so i i get the idea exactly. of that um yeah. bryce i know i know you're you're waiting to jump in but uh do you have any plans for this season like any immediate goals ziggy for the 2022 season yeah, so I'm uh, I'm actually heading down to Latin America Q School in less than three weeks. I leave November 18th for Argentina. Nice. Um, so I'm gonna go play Latin America Q School. Um, ideally, get status there and play that schedule through the winter. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So yeah. all all the events are are uh, like. Do you have an idea of what the schedule looks like there yet? Yeah, the schedule is pretty good. Um, so Q School's in Argentina. And then the first events in Buenos Aires the week after, and then to Chile after that. Um, and then there's an eight week break in the schedule. Um, so like December to February is kind of off. Uh, and then they pick back up again in Mexico and then for two weeks, and then two weeks in Argentina again. And then I think it's Ecuador, Peru, Colombia, and then finishing in Mexico. Nice. Uh, you're gonna be all over, eh? That's oh, so yeah, yeah. That's It'd a nice looking schedule. Sweet. And then, what are you uh, gonna yeah. do for uh, living? Just hotels, or are you gonna like? Get I a... think, yeah, Latin America. I'll probably do hotels. Um, something close to the course, make the the trek a little bit easier. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, next season, 2022, you're looking back on the Mac tour here. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, Q school should be probably back to its normal time of end of, end of April or May or whenever that is. Um, so the Latin America schedule kind of ends in June. So hopefully they there's a, there's a break in the schedule where I can go play Mac to Q school. Nice. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. Nice. Okay, sounds pretty you, good. Uh, are you a big gearhead, Diggy, or not really? Uh, a little bit. Like I I know a bunch of stuff. Okay, uh, uh, we just wonder. I, I saw, I saw. Wait, I saw you had the ping man grip in one of your photos. That, yeah, that was an old one. Yeah. Is that yeah. a Tiger Woods thing, or is that because you're a? Uh, is that because you're a gearhead? Uh, a little bit. A feel thing, well, man. Those yeah, that that hard. grip's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, you want to go through your bag a little bit with us? Yeah, we could. Yeah. Are you playing on the top end? I got the Titleist TSI three. Uh, Fujikura Pro 2.0 Tur Spec 6X shaft. Oh, you, you're you know enough then, eh? If oh, I, I know my clubs. I know my clubs inside. Of, yeah. Uh, what, three wood, five wood. Uh, three wood, four wood ish. Uh, TSI two, 16.5 head. Uh, oh, what shafts in there? Oh, uh, that's the Hazardous Smoke RDX, uh, 70 gram 6.0 or something like that. Yeah, um, did you ever play it? Did you play the same one before the RDX? Because the RDX is, I think, two, only two years old. Like, it's pretty new. It's the new one. Uh, no, I had, back my M5 3-wood, I had the Tour AD IZ7. Yeah, the orange one? Yeah. Um, hybrid or? Yeah, I'm a hybrid. I'm a hybrid guy. TSI 3 hybrid. Uh, Tensei White 90 gram X. Yeah, that's nice. at 21 degrees, I believe. Nice. Is that, yeah. have you ever been a long iron guy or always hybrid? No, I've always been a hybrid guy. Uh, I just, I hit it into so many part fives that like, I just want it landing high and soft. Do you have trouble overdrawing it sometimes or you're just so used to that hybrid? Uh, I did at the start, but now I have that thing like set on max fade and all oh. the weights in the toe. So like I got to work to turn that ball over nice yeah so all, all titleist is it uh is it preference or or are you uh you connect with them uh, in way? they they treat me pretty good nice uh yeah so they're pretty good to me overall um and their stuff like i i tested pretty much every driver when i was in the market and like the tsi3 was so good like it was just so money it was hot like i didn't really miss it and then i put that fujikura pro shaft in there it was just like yeah this is the one like um, what do you got yeah. for irons? Uh, I got the MBCB combo set, Titleist. 
uh, X100 Tour Issue Shaft. MBs to six iron? Seven, seven. I got seven, eight, nine MBs and then four, five, six uh, CD. So then you're a Volky wet pitching wedge guy? Yeah, I'm a Volky pitching wedge guy. 46 degree, 50 degree, 54, and 60. Nice. Yeah. I like it. I flip back and forth. Like, I play Strixons, but I flip back and forth between the uh... – I actually out out west there. Um, there's a company Haywood Golf. I've always played yep. Volkies as well, but uh, I I picked up their wedges and they're they're nice. I like them. Um, yeah. So I've been trying yeah. to play those a little bit, and uh, I I enjoy them. Like I I kind of like yeah. the look of um. I think it's just because you know, like a scoring club, like it looks nice to have like a wedge in your hands when you're hitting a pitching wedge yeah. into like you know yeah. 140, 150, whatever it may be. Yeah. So, um, have you always played it that way? Has that always been your preference? The four <laughs> wedges uh i think i switched it was either my i think it was my first year of college okay um i went in with like some some like not very good tailor-made irons um they were like big cavity backs and then i got fit and i think i went for the 46 degree wedge in one of those sets um and i just loved it ever since so you went from a big cavity right to the blades eh yeah yeah um i i I wasn't expecting to get blades i got fit um and like i wanted the ap2s when they were a thing because i was like oh these would be perfect for me and then i just hit the mbs really good and i was like okay guess i'm going mbs bryce i i haven't even told you yet i know you'll like it uh i played the zu65 zu65 um three iron for like the 20 degree three iron for a while now but i just picked up uh the titleist is it the uh, U- ut 500 yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, I just yeah that, that thing's up. good and that thing is an absolute rocket launcher even even for yeah. me I, I love that club love it is that the big one or is that the smaller one no that's the big one the big guy but like yeah, it's yeah, not okay. like that like big. It's, it's yeah it's yeah. it's smaller than my uh it's smaller than the uh utility iron from strix on i'm pretty oh, really? don't quote me on this but i'm pretty sure the smaller one's a u 200 i want to say I thought they had the 500 and the 510. Yeah, you could be right. You could be right. Uh, yeah, it's... I just can't remember which one's the bigger one. I don't think the 500 is the bigger one, Bryce. I because yeah, it, you... it does. It's not like the driving hybrid version. It's like just the iron version, but uh, it's okay, pretty okay. sweet. It's it's nice. Yeah. I'll, uh, if I remember, I'll try and drop a photo for anybody looking. But um, yeah. all right, go finish it up, Bryce. Sorry, man. What are you uh, What are you rolling it with? Uh, I just switched putters. Um, I. Bought one during the Mac tour season. Right uh, off the back or what? Uh, I bought it off Facebook Marketplace. Nice. <laughs> nice. Spent six hundred dollars on it. Uh, Odyssey, Toulon, Las Vegas. Nice. Uh, that thing is sweet. Uh, since I put that in the bag, I've been rolling it so good. What were you playing before that? Uh, I had a tailor made Spider X, which I love. I just like I didn't putt that well this summer, and I kind of flip flop back and fourth once my caddy joined me in saskatchewan like i used his odyssey then i used my spider for the last like three weeks and then i just is the, is the las vegas a mallet too yeah yeah it's a mallet it's uh it's the the fang one yeah oh yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. not far it's not far off what you're rolling you you're playing the oaks or whatever it is Bryce. yeah is just it? the number seven yeah. yeah 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 it's like that one yeah it's just Same the two versions on that similar one. look yeah. yeah very similar two long clean though i love the face the oh. melt faces on them it's so good is it flow neck is it a flow neck yeah i got the flow neck okay yeah all right yeah. Nice. so I, uh, it'd be pretty it'd be pretty similar to what you're rolling right now Bryce. yeah i just I don't know. I'm still iffy on that micro hinge technology with mine. I feel like it just springs off that face so quick sometimes and it's so hard to control. Oh, really? I yeah. don't know. The two long face is so soft. Like it's, yeah. it's so money. Yeah. User error. <laughs> Ew, for sure. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. What, uh, what ball are you using, Ziggy? Uh, Tyler's probably one. Okay. Nice. Probably one ball. Yeah. Okay. All right. Like it. Anything crazy in the bag? Anything crazy? Like yeah, we know. asked uh, we asked Spencer this last week, and and the um, he's on the back for Sun JM, and he said the craziest thing are shoelaces and what do you say, uh, baby wipes, yeah, baby wipes. Yeah. And he carries a uh, massage gun, massage hanging. gun on the back, there again hey, on the back. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, not really. I feel like my bag's pretty stock. I've got some food in there, some balls, some teas. Okay. Yeah. A glove. <laughs> I've got the like you had Did the. You play- guys use Finders? On, uh yep. yeah we, we were allowed this year yeah 
What are you using there? Bushnell? Uh, Bushnell, yeah. I had to buy a new one because my Tour V2 conked out in V2. South Dakota. So V2, that thing I used for probably seven years. That's awesome. uh, and, then, and then I finally picked up uh, Tour V5. Nice. Yeah. And uh, I think you have like the Players 4 bag. I think that's the same bag that I have. It's nice and light. That's why. Yeah. I was yeah. like carrying Jake's. It was so hot. I threw some like Gatorade in there. And we're... Uh, it, was, it was a lot. It was a lot. To, <laughs> I burned out a pair of shoes like the first day. I'm a pretty big guy. Oh, I had to go, go pick up a new pair of shoes. That was a that was that was a hot weekend. That was one of the hottest weekends of the summer. That was not, warm. If not oh. it. So, uh, are luckily, you, are you using staff bag all the time everywhere, or do you carry when you're? No, I got the carry bag. I have no staff bag. Not at all. Oh, okay. No, not at all. Yeah, no, it's like the uh, you bag. know the little black one that I have, Bryce, like the yeah, black yeah. with like the red trim. It was. I'm pretty sure it's the yeah. exact same yeah. bag. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. It was uh, it, it was a good, it was a good weekend. Just very, very hot. Um, yeah, Bryce, I'm gonna steal your question though. Uh, Ziggy, if you weren't uh, golfing, what would you be doing other than Man, playing Warzone I with to, your buddy right now? Yeah. Your buddies, because we're I, uh, we're running over time here. <laughs> I had to think about this one for a while, um, and I still don't know. Uh, I got my degree in a, in accounting from UBC. Like, I feel like if I didn't play golf at UBC, I'd probably just be a boring accountant. Like, which is so lame. And I hate that I'm saying that because oh, it's just so lame. But I I really don't know what else I'd be doing. So good thing I'm golfing because yeah. I think I'd be a terrible accountant. And hey, man, when you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you, hey, you, you might need to manage your money someday. You're going to be a yeah, big golfer, yeah. man. So. <laughs> um, but Ziggy, we really appreciate you coming on. I know uh, we had a couple of technical difficulties, so I am going to do my best to edit those out. Hopefully nobody notices here. Uh, new software is still working at the Kings, but the sound is great. Really appreciate you taking the time. I yeah, know I you have a, uh, know you have a lot of support out there. Um, like you're playing at Richmond right now. Can you, uh, let us know like any, any of your, you know, friends, your, your caddy, any sponsors taking care of you, anybody helping you out along the, uh, the journey here. Cause we know that, uh, pro golf's a grind, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a, a bunch of companies helping me out, a bunch of friends. Uh, I'll plug the sponsors. Uh, Farmer Save has been a big one um zana contracting in toronto e-shipper plus in toronto um all insurance from edmonton uh party golf in richmond they've been huge for me uh mortgage pedia from toronto and then two more uh stem tech and tbx freight they're pretty good and obviously richmond country club like they uh they pretty much let me do whatever i want there nice. play as much as i want practice as much as i want um they're they've been awesome to me Looks like a uh, pretty nice course too. I haven't been out there, but it yeah, looks uh, that's sweet. looks beautiful. Now, um, if anybody wants to kind of you know follow the journey, you know I mentioned the website z i g g y n a t h u dot com ziggynathu dot com. Um, any socials that we can link in the description below for you? Yeah, um, I think my Instagram and Twitter are both at ziggynathu. Um, okay. So I'm more active on Instagram than I am Twitter. Um, yeah, the Instagram is where I kind of post everything. So Very if you good. want, you can give me a follow. Right on. I will. Uh, I'll link them below. Anybody, go check it out. Um, you know, Ziggy, you're one of the best young players in Canada. Really appreciate you taking the time coming appreciate on. It. And uh, yeah, if your caddy doesn't follow you over to uh, Toronto next year, give me a call. I'll uh, I'll come by and carry sure the bag. The do. walk is uh, the walk is nice. I appreciate that. Bryce, you got anything before we head out? No, it's a pleasure meeting you. Thanks for coming on. No, thanks for having me, boys. All right, Ziggy. Take care, man. All the best. He's out in my ball and of course where I tee up. I lose a ball and I re up. I miss a fairway, I probably end up in the ocean or maybe the beach. And I'm on a par five and I'm finna go reach it. Second was blind, I see it. Feel like it might be an average. I was working scenario.